Recommending relevant content to your users is critical to keeping them engaged, but it's not so straightforward implementing something like that as an app developer. The good news is, with the advancement of AI, it's easier than ever to implement a recommendation feature. In this video, I'll be building a movie list app where as you view different movies, it'll recommend other movies that are relevant to you. Let's dive in. Let's start up by setting up our Superviz project. I've already gone ahead and created my Superviz project here, but if you don't have one yet, you can go ahead and create one at database.new. Let's first enable the PG Vector extension. From the database menu, go to extensions, then search for vector, enable it by toggling the switch, and hit enable extension. Great! We can now create the table. Head to the SQL editor. Create a movies table under the public schema. It will have a integer ID column as its primary key, a title, overview, release date, and backshot path which contains the path to the main visual image of the movie, and the embedding column which is a type vector. Let's run it and create the table. Let's go check out the table from the table editor. We can confirm our movies table has been created. Let's enable rollable security for this table. We are not implementing any authentication in this video, but it's still a good practice to enable it. Now, in order for anybody to access this table, we need to add rollable security policies. So let's create one. We'll create a select policy so that users can get data from this table. We can target the anon role since nobody's gonna be logged in in this app. Let's hit review and create the policy. And our table is ready. Let's jump into our editor and create the edge functions to retrieve the movie's data, create the embedding, and store the data in our database. In this blank project directory, run supervis init. Let's also choose to generate VS Code settings for Dino. Then run supervis functions new get movies to create a new edge functions called get movies. Let's open up the function file and get to work. Let me clean up the extra comments and code first. Let's declare all the environment variables we'll be using. First, the Superbase URL, and then the Superbase service key. We'll use these two to write to the database at the end. Let's get the TMDB API key to access all the movie's data. And lastly, the OpenAI API key to generate the embeddings. We can then create a Superbase client. We also need to import the create client up here. Now we want to get the top 20 most popular movie in a given year. So let's get the year value from the query parameters of the requested URL. It's a bit of a sloppy error handling, but if the year is not specified, we can just throw on an error. Now let's make a request to the TMDB API. We'll be using their discovery endpoint, as it allows us to narrow down the search result using the many filters they provide. Let's copy the endpoint and head back to our code. Paste the URL, and we can construct the query parameters. Let's declare a search params variable up here, and we can add each of the filtering options we want to pass to the API call. And just like that, we have the list of options we want to pass to the API call. We can then add these options at the end of the URL. We're almost there. Let's also define the HTTP request method and add the headers. Content type is application JSON. And we also need the authorization header. We'll pass the TMDB API key as the bear token. Now we can extract the response JSON object by calling TMDB response.json. Let's also get the status of the response and do some basic error handling. Now we can extract the movie's data from the results. Let's define an interface to make it easier to work with the data. This movie interface contains all the columns that we defined in the Superbase database, except for the embedding. We can then cast the results as an array of movie. Once we have the list of movies, we can loop over them to generate the embeddings. Let's make an API request within the loop. We'll be calling the OpenAI's Embeddings API. We can copy the endpoint from the official documentation and paste it right in. Let's edit the options. The HTTP request method will be post, content type will be JSON, and in the authorization header, we'll pass the OpenAI API key. In the input of the body, we provide the text that we want to convert to embeddings. In our case, the overview of the movie. And then we need to specify what model we want to use. For this project, I'm using the text embedding 3 small model. Let's copy it and paste it right in. 
Once we make the request, we can check for errors. And then we can extract the embedding from the result. Now we need a variable to store the movies data as well as the embedding. So we can create a movies with embeddings variable up here. Let's also create an interface for this. We can add it below the movie interface. We can extend the movie interface and add the embedding property. Then we can specify the type here. Finally, we can come back to after getting the embeddings and push a new movies with embedding object to the movies with embeddings variable. Once we have all the data, all we need to do is just insert it into our Superbase database. Add some minimal error handling as well. Let's also slightly change the response message. That's it for the code. Now let's set up the environment variables. Create a .env file within the Superbase folder. It's also important that we don't add this file to version control, so let's create a git ignore file as well. Great. Moving on to adding the environment variables. Let's copy the environment variable names over to .env file. The two Superbase credentials will be automatically set, so we don't have to do anything about it. Now let me go get the API keys. Great! One thing to note is that even though I named it TMDB API key, it's the access token that you actually want, so make sure to copy the access token. Now that we have the environment variables ready, let's set them on our Superbase project. Let's first associate this local project to a remote Superbase instance. We can get the project ref from our settings page. And we are asked to provide the database password. We can reset the database password from the settings page within the database menu. Let's have Superbase generate a secure password and make sure to copy it. Then we can paste it in and hit return. Great, our project is linked. Finally, we can call the Superbase secret set command to set the environment variables. The environment variables are set. I think we are ready to deploy this function. Run the deploy command and off we go. And our function is deployed. Let's check it out in the dashboard. By default, Superbase edge functions require authorization headers. We can disable that behavior by toggling the switch here. Let's hit save. Let's try to run this function. We can copy the URL and access it from the browser. Make sure to pass the ear query parameter. And we get an error. That's alright, let's take a look at the logs. So it looks like there's something wrong with retrieving data from the TMDB API. Come back to VS Code, and it turns out it has to do with the way I handle the status of the TMDB API response. I should be looking at the status property from the TMDB response, not the TMDB JSON. Fix it up and let's deploy it again. This time with the no verify JWT flag. This flag disables the authorization header requirement just like how we did it from the dashboard. The deployment is done. Let's check it out. It takes a while as we are looping through 20 different movies and there's probably ways we could optimize it, but that's not the point of this video. So if you know how I should have optimized my code, let me know in the comments. The function is done executing. Let's go check out the table. And we see 20 videos being stored in our table. Great, let me call the function a few more times to get more data in. And just like that, we have 500 movies in our database. 20 most popular movies from each year in the past 25 years. Now that we have all the data we need, let's create an interface for the app. Let's create a blank Flutter application. And let me rename the directory to Flutter. Close this and let's dive into some Flutter code. Before we dive into coding, let's add all the dependencies that we need. And the only dependencies that we need is Superbase Flutter for this project. Let's create all the files that we need for this project. We'll have a home page which contains a list of all the movies. We'll have a details page which contains a detail about a movie as well as the recommended movie below that. We'll have a movie cell component which is used to create the list view. And finally, we'll have a data model for each movies. Let's get started with this model. Similar to the interface that we created in TypeScript, we just have to mirror each column in this model. 
But instead of backdrop path, we have an image URL. We'll dynamically create the image URL from the backdrop path. You can read more about how to construct the image URL from the backdrop path on the TMDB API docs. And we have the data model to work with. It's about time we can start seeing some UI code, so let's start the simulator. Let's remember to initialize Superbase. We can get the Superbase URL and then unkey from the settings page. Let's keep a Superbase variable down here as well. Now let's move on to creating the home page. And let's replace the home widget on the material app. And let's start the simulator. The home page will be a simple list view of all the movies. We start with a basic scaffold. And the body will be a future builder. We'll have a minimal code for the loading state. We can extract the data in a movies variable. But before that, we have to define the future. Convert home page to a stateful widget. And construct a query to get the movies. We can sort them by the release stage so that new movies come at the top. Now we can convert the list of data to list of movies by passing the constructor. Then we can create a list view. For now, let's just see the title to see if the data is coming through. Great, it looks like we are able to display the movie's data. Now let's move on to creating the movie cell to have a better visual. A movie cell would take a movie as its parameter. It'll basically be an image that you can tap onto and it'll take you to the details page. Within the on-tap callback, we are navigating to the details page. But we haven't created the details page, so we are going to just comment it out. A child is going to have an image and some text on top of the image. All the cells are going to have a fixed aspect ratio. Then it's going to have an image. Now on top of the image, we are going to have some text. And that text is going to have a black gradient background, which we are constructing right now. Once the nice gradient is done, we can add the title right here. Let's also make the title text white. Add some padding around it and this should do it. Let's go back to the home page and have it display a movie cell. And voila, not bad, huh? Now let's move on to creating the details page. Details page would take a movie as a parameter as well. And the UI would have a scaffold with an app bar and the title. Now the body will be a list view containing a few different things. At the top, we'll have the image. And below that, we'll have a few more details about the movie, like title, release date, and overview. Once we actually rename this widget to details page, let's go back to the movie cell and complete the on-tap callback. Let's view the details page. Looks pretty good. Let's fix up the styles a bit. Adding some padding, fixing the alignment, and changing the font styles a bit. It's looking pretty good. Now we are adding a future builder at the bottom. Within this future builder, we are using the Superbase's vector database capability to query movies that are similar to this movie that we are viewing. We can create a related movie's future up here. And using the RPC function, we can call a database function on the Superbase database. So let's head over to Superbase dashboard and create the database function. We can call the function get related movies. It'll take two arguments, embedding and movie ID. It'll then return six movies that are similar to the given movie embedding. And this order by clause is where the magic happens. It's ordering the movies in terms of the cosine similarity from the given embedding. And because OpenAI's embeddings API generate the embeddings in a way that similar context would point to a similar direction, we can create a high quality similar research with this. And the function's done. Run it, it looks like I made a typo, so fix it, and let's run it again. Great, the function's created. Let's also add an index. For this particular project, we only have 500 rows, but it's still a good practice. Now coming back to the app, we can call the getRelatedMovies function. 
Since we need the parameters from the widget, let's move these into init state. And now that we have the future object, we can scroll down and pass it to the future builder. We can construct a movies variable from the snapshot.data and add a simple UI using wrap. Each cell of the wrap will be tappable because we want to be able to go into the details page of the recommended movies as well. The UI looks pretty good. Let's add the on tap callback. And at this point, the app is done. Let's click into a few movies to see if they look similar. Godzilla to another Godzilla movie, and then Batman, you know, similar fighting, and then another Batman, leading to Joker movie, which leads to American Psycho. I think it's pretty related. The accuracy of the recommendation is actually pretty amazing. And that's how you can build a content recommendation engine using OpenAI and Superbase. If you like these AI videos, give us a thumb up. I will see you in another video. Bye!